are watching at home who aren't familiar with these type of bonds, when they hear about securities being wrapped, rewrapped, sold, added in by a reinsurance guy and somebody on the right and somebody on the left, they start to get concerned of those are the problems we faced back in 2006, 2007. Well, what we have is really an institutional product at this point. There's, there isn't uh, even a high net worth participation. And it's a small group of about 20 specialist managers who are <coughs> investing on behalf of uh, ultimately pension funds around the world. So they have uh, most of the principles of those organizations are split between people with a reinsurance underwriting and cat modeling background, as well as people with a sort of a fixed income background. Legally, those who can participate in cat bonds, do they have to have those criteria? They have to be qualified institutional buyers, and then it's up to, depending on the product, whether or not we're going to have um, a, a suitable product ultimately for retail or high net worth, but that's not where the market's been going the last 20 years. You came out of Swiss Re, and it's Swiss Re that objects to this idea that cat bonds should be included or can be included in insurance linked products, correct? Uh, I, I mean, I can't comment on Swiss Re's current views, but ultimately they've actually been quite a big participant and user of the market a, as well over time. So, going back to Stephanie's point, you know, is there a parallel at all to be drawn between the, they're qualified institutional buyers, but as we learned, some of those qualified institutional buyers during the residential mortgage-backed securities crisis were institutional. I mean, that's a huge basket of investors. Yeah, look, I'm not... Yep. Is there any parallel to be drawn there? Well, look, there, we should always be cautious as things evolve and as the, as the market changes. But right now we have um, complex problems that corporates and insurers are facing that are dealt with with relatively complicated structures in the traditional reinsurance market. However, in the ILS market, including cat bonds, the structures are actually focused on individual perils such as hurricanes mm -hmm. or earthquakes, and they are simpler at this time. If a, if a retail investor is sophisticated enough to want uncorrelated risk, should he or she have access to this market? Uh, you know, I think our view is not with the current products. There are plenty of, of managers they can participate through. So they, there are some mutual funds that have been set up in Europe as well as here in the U.S. So they can participate in that way. But the current products really are not, I, I don't think they are suitable for, for retail investors. Okay, well, hurricane, Atlanta hurricane season starts today. What is that, 22 billion of cat bonds now, mm -hmm. one would say, at risk? Mm -hmm. What's your sort of outlook? What are we going to see ahead? Well, uh, you know, we, we still, we've had good issuance this year so far. Um, the investors tend to look at those forecasts with a little bit of a grain of salt. And so while there's some modest adjustment of positions, there's no so, sort of wholesale movement towards taking more risk. And in fact, we've seen spreads, especially for the hurricane, related deals, which is about 70% uh, of the market, that they've been plateauing the last six months. So uh, I think we'll see more of that. All right, Bill, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Bill Davinsky of Willis Capital Markets.